Yeah, readings and salutations, all you beautiful people. Welcome back. Another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys. It is Global Power Rankings as we're flying in the playoffs in the LPL 20 to 1. And I'm going to say probably the most stable list that we've had so far in summer. And it makes sense because we're getting deep now into the season. Thankfully, that this is the most stable list. And it is coming in clutch at that time where we are rounding into playoffs where you know it gets a little bit more difficult to judge these type of lists or you are actually going through so much more movement in that type of list when you start to introduce these playoffs best of series on the horizons good to take this type of time to reflect check in on all these major regions smash them together and make a global power rank four losses in a row means evil geniuses are <clears throat> punted out of the top 20 and somehow T team liquid finds a little key on the ground and it what is this uh, top 20 we can what we can get in now they're they're barely on that bubble mm, that's a very strange shaped key when it looks like the letters a p a in the mid lane for team liquid all the problems are solved for team liquid no that's that ain't the case when we're watching this team there still is a couple of hiccups a couple of mistakes coming through and how they're handling these advantages that they're able to get you feel more confident with apa in that mid lane on being able to secure and cash out on these advantages for team liquid and come across that finish line yes we are seeing some you know a droppy game here or there but still the overall performance the overall level of excellence coming through from this team liquid roster Looking pretty good and shaping up where I feel comfortable putting them in at this number 20 spot. They're followed by a couple of teams who are slumping. We're not feeling great about, but still on this list. World Elite goes down. They've, you know, they've had some good performances against good teams, but are definitely slumping in. They were seven and five at one point. They're in the midst of a big losing streak. Fnatic, obviously did not show up against SK in their playoff debut, but both squads still have an opportunity to save their seasons. Yeah, there still is room for them to, to grab that escape rope and keep climbing, keep pushing into that next territory, but they have suffered a loss, have taken a hit is the way you're kind of looking at these two. As you mentioned, Fnatic, that struggle in that playoff series against SK, you know, best of three, so not the full extent, but still absolutely a regression compared to what we had been seeing that level and what they had been building up on week after week through that uh, summer split in the lec comes crashing down in that sk game so needing to see that rebound from Fnatic still have the opportunity for that and then as you mentioned we yes they have been slipping and sliding in the last little bit in the lpl after they kind of generated enough heat enough wins for that attention they still have the opportunity against EDG to be that dark horse in these playoffs, make that long, long run up this LPL bracket. They've got that opportunity. The LPL playoff gauntlet might be harder than a Worlds playoff gauntlet because it's yeah. <laughs> it's like Worlds contender. You don't have. There's no way to get an easy draw uh, as you push through because every team is so absolutely insane. But how about number 17 on this list? XL Esports, Mark. The back-to-back 10th -back place finishes. Peach is really the only roster change coming into this year. And all of a sudden, this squad wins two best of threes in a row. And now they are guaranteed a top three finish in summer. What an incredible turnaround from the boys. Miraculous job from Excel, from these players and the organization, what they have been able to do. You told me at the beginning of the year that we'd be talking about Excel in this top 20. I would say, okay, good. It seems like these things that they went through, we're seeing the positives of all the offseason changes. Check, 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 check. That ain't how it played out, my man. We saw that this roster has been changed a lot throughout the course of this split. But as you mentioned, Peach, the big one that stepped in for this summer split, and yes, we are seeing those results. Yes, you are seeing Patrick return to this conversation, which I was worried about at the beginning of the year, where we didn't see him take these strides, take this type of effort and show it on that LEC stage. We are seeing it for XL right now. That damage, that power is a big part of why they're able to get these advantages for the team. Cannot be sleeping on, of course, Mr. Veteran in the top side, Oda Wamne, of course, for the team. 
Yeah, you know, the rumble pick we highlighted, but Excel really showcasing mental fortitude, not only coming back in the summer split, but especially, you know, they were down in uh, a couple of these SK matchups that they ended up coming from behind to win, but the team fighting, team fighting absolute masterclass from Excel and well-deserved to get to that winner's round of the group stage in the LEC. Couple of LCS squads stay in put. You know, Cloud9 and Golden Guardians both went 2-1, and one, both very close in power level. To get much higher against all these Eastern squads, though, I mean, it's it's got to be playoff performance and dominant playoff performance. It's, it's getting into that territory where you can only push so far as the LCS, and especially as we move into the later parts of doing this year, every year, you know, Opium, copium, stupidity, whatever you want to label it, springs eternal. And we believe in these teams. We get knocked down at MSI and refiguring out and readjusting that power that we believe in in the LCK and the LPL top dogs. The top teams in the LCS, Cloud9 and Golden Guardians, which are proving themselves and staying stable and proving that, yes, to make it even further ground at this point in the list is going to be difficult, as you mentioned. You need those big playoff performances or you need a big international one. And right now, you got to go through the playoffs before that international. And if you want an extra dose of hopium to enter a new state of consciousness delusion, you can say new worlds format. That's what the LCS has needed to make a deep run. This new Swiss format, it's going to change everything. Yes. Yes, that is also true. That's also forgetting the big asterisk that says these are the other things that the LCS needed changed in order to be at that Long time. Long list. Too. That wasn't the question. So we're accepting that one for now. LCS, Cloud9, Golden Guardian staying stable where they are in the power rankings. And again, should still feel good about them as the top dogs in the LCS as we head into that final week of regular season in North America. Sandwiched in between them is Edward Gaming, who... You feel like had an opportunity to really stand solid heading into playoffs. They could have matched the same record as Weibo Gaming. Had a very competitive first game against them. Definitely were outmatched in that second game. You feel like it's a little frustrating because you really want to get excited and see them at that peak form. But it hasn't showed up yet. We'll see if best of fives is where the magic comes. It's one of these things where you've seen enough building up with this EDG team that you believe that there is something more. There is more potential to scratch, to build towards, even in this small window that you're looking at now of these LPL playoffs, what they're going to have to run through, this long run up the bracket, if anything's going to happen for this team got to be believing that what we have seen from Uzi has been enough to push them into that moving from just a good or great team into elite but they haven't hit that elite level enough times yet with Uzi to make you fully believe that that's where they can get to enough times in one of these uh you know intense playoff series in the LPL still waiting to see from them they should be the favorites against WE but even even after that match it starts to ramp up mighty fast in the LPL Entering back to the LCK, where we have fully entered the G Riz era. Grizzly for Hanwha Life. I'm, I'm hesitant, but I'm getting excited about this team again because they've been at a different level since Clit was ousted from that starting lineup. It really shows kind of what a difference having a jungler can make for some of these players, specifically Kingen and Zeka, the two that we have looked at so many times as not operating at that level that we know that their potential can reach and what that effect, if they're at that full max of potential is on the LCK landscape, because that changes the power level that you're looking at a team like Hanwha Life. And that certainly shakes up the order of how things are going at that top of the table in the LCK. We're not quite there yet with Hanwha Life, but they are building themselves up in that conversation. As you said, Grizzly, the, the catalyst to me for that change and what has been happening for this team. Ahead of them, RNG, same record as EDG, but again, a little more confident in the performances they've put over the last couple of weeks, especially against some of the better teams like BLG, obviously a very competitive three game set, some competitive moments against Weibo as well. So there are a few spots ahead and then we get to the elephant on the board. T1 only down a spot but outside of the top 10 for the first time in this split and listen there were some positives to take from that D plus Kia 
series, but still, T1, still going to be figuring things out. We know it's all about just getting into playoffs. Whenever Faker comes back, this team is going to be able to turn it on. It really seemed like it was a situation where you had that series against D plus Kia, and the performance was enough and was difficult enough for D plus to finish the job and take the series that you are giving some points. You are less, you know, giving that cushion for T1 where they're not dropping even further out of this list. As you mentioned already, they've already taken that hit before in the week prior of getting kicked out of that ultra elite top five type of zone, kicked out of the top 10. They've slowed it down a little bit with that performance and how you can hang on and see some of these positives. Still is of overwhelmingly that glaring issue of not having Faker and what he brings individually to this team, what the whole team benefits from him, how he raises it up, all these type of things are big factors. But the big positive thing on the horizon, he's talking about it. Faker himself talking about that injury, trying to take the, the high road, the most positive angle that I think he could ever take from this type of situation. And we are even seeing a little bit of that activity on that League of Legends account after 17 days playing a bit of ARAM. Only ARAM for now, but you know the shy. We love some ARAM over here. This is going to be a, a long-term thing that we're keeping track of with T1. And I think right now, though, could be sooner rather than later. And again, being cautious that we see Faker return to this T1 line. Yeah, playoffs seems like the sweet spot for him to return. But obviously, they'll monitor the situation, and T1 will be happy whenever the goat does return. Sliding into that top ten now, where T1 is replaced by. The inconsistently consistent Weibo Gaming, who had another stellar week from Zhao Hu, who I, I feel like a couple weeks ago we talked about him not having the impact. Well, now he's the guy leading MVPs for Weibo, and the Azir remains world class. Weibo looks about as good as they have all split now heading into playoffs. Oh, that's the scariest thing, isn't it? That's when we all know that the floor comes out. <laughs> underneath Weibo Gaming, where that's where we get a uh, certified this shy moment in the top side, not the ones that you are not the good ones. Your <laughs> no, sorry. But you are feeling pretty good about what you have seen from Weibo Gaming, and enough has been built up and enough consistently for the inconsistent squad that we are ha holding them in this top 10 position before these LPL playoffs. They, of course, are going to get into action after RNG and, and NIP figure out who is that winner, who is that victor gonna be a tight one that next series but it is absolutely one of those ones again and it sounds like that broken record anytime you look at these lpl playoff brackets you go okay most of the time you're evaluating these teams and you go yep i can see you getting the job done against this squad or this one that will come up into your matchup the very next dogs that you got to take on they are a scary squad and yes ahead of of Weibo gaming it's looking like an lng matchup ahead Talking about broken records, here we are. You saw the rest of this list, and leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the West is G2 Esports, a couple of two zeros. I don't think we've seen better Ivern or Rel performances out of anyone from the West. And, I mean, take your pick, Yike or Mickey. Both of them seem to have mastered the Rel, but this Ivern masterclass out of Yike. G2 operating at another level right now. I mean, people are going to start going crazy about how much we love Yike and G2 Esports and what he has been able to do for them. Talking about this guy and how aggressive he played, the difference in the champions. We're going all the way back, you know, winter and spring. We're talking about the Belvet. We're talking about Kha'Zix and MSI. And here we are talking about Rel and Ivern. What is going on, my man? He is still able to get the job done, still able to be a very important factor for this G2 team. It's crazy because, yes, we knew that there was going to be hype and excitement around him as an individual player, but trying to step into the shadow of Yankos and what he accomplished at G2, most importantly, was going to be almost insurmountable for anybody to try and carve out their own name, own legacy. And here we are, Yike is doing it already year one of his time at G2. Yeah, with this star-studded roster, he's the guy we continually talk about because he is the star among the stars on this squad. It continues to prove it. D-plus still ahead of G2. They get dropped a spot. It's a combo of clearly being a tier below KT in that head-to-head. -head. And then you look at the jam-packed schedule that OMG had. They went 3-0 and to close out the regular season all in one week. So the combo of that means OMG gets the bump. D-plus taken down a notch.
Yeah, and I, th I think for D+, plus, it is that slight little hiccup for them, but we are still overwhelmingly seeing that positive momentum, positive trend for this team. And maybe that's partly because of this vacuum that has appeared in that elite territory with T1 having this Faker issue and the, and the drop down as well. That could be part of it. But then you look at that bigger picture, as you mentioned, this global power ranking, you add in that LPL, you start considering what OMG has done, what power level they're at, and how confident you feel about them matching up in a best of series. And yes, you do have to right the ship and put OMG in that spot ahead. And again, very excited to see OMG in playoffs because you know they're going to be drafting some wacky picks to throw a wrench in this LPL bracket, which, which was exactly the recipe that had them a pretty deep run in that spring split. Top Esports rounds out this 10 to 6 area. And thankfully for us, especially producer Reed, big fan of TES, I think the, the hesitation, the worriness that we had after that JDG series, they kind of closed out the regular season, business as usual, no real concerns beating up on some of the middle to lower tier teams. No real concerns, and especially given that when you are top esports and you still are maybe, you know, a little bit behind the eight ball when you are considering these other elite teams in the LPL and what they accomplished in that spring split and the points that they earned for themselves, this has to be a very hungry TES in playoffs and a very determined one to get the job done where they are starting in playoffs of what is ahead of them. It's a scary one, but it's not an impossible one. Looking at whatever would come through their way till, till their matchup and then even after it looking ahead, which again, scary. You don't want to be looking ahead too much, but in ahead of them would be that BLG matchup. And that's the one where you do get the chance, the opportunity where if you lose, you go down to that losers bracket that is the key one for me, for a squad like Top Esports, to have that level of security, to have that safety blanket of that loser bracket opportunity. Yeah, that is the ultimate checkpoint for all these LPL squads to kind of take a deep breath and say, we made it to this stage. Now we reset and go for the final run throughout that summer split. Top five action now, and the fifth spot remains the same. I think it's very LNG. You can compare, I mean, same record as top esports, same kind of closeout, pretty consistent against the lower tier teams. If LNG sitting just inside the top five VIP lounge, top esports is only allowed to the takeout window. They're waiting outside. They can order, but they can't go in yet. Hey, man, it's pretty good, man. You can get a couple of some nice chicken wings, you know, oh, pretty yeah, good. Yeah. A couple of bar, bar orders, maybe a side, side of fresh lemon water, something like that could be good. No alcoholic beverages for TES, though. No, no. Um, hey man, we got to keep it clean and controlled for Jackie Love. We ain't getting anywhere silly and sloppy. But inside the top five, it is ain't nothing silly about these squads and the way that they're playing and how good they are performing. This is the ultra elite level of the VIP world power rank. If you were watching LNG stocks, they'd be going like this. And then, oh, Kaisa becomes meta. Oh, Gala about to pop off. Still different team guys still probably the best kaisa on the planet and again when you want a picture of how dominant a kaisa has been a pick around the world no better region than to look in the lck and look at the comparison of pretty much over the last week or so we have seen 20 plus kaisa we have seen kaisa banned one time with an 100 percent pick banned presence that means a lot of kaisas are being played guys in the in the lck you can copy and paste that around the world to these other regions too. Broken, but not broken enough to ban it. You know, kind of in that sweet spot in between. Another guy who's pretty damn good at it is Mr. Aiming on KT. And listen, this series against D+, we were just highlighting T1. They were competitive. There were moments against D+, that you can feel good about. Then KT comes and completely outclasses D+, when it comes to team fights. And you say, oh yeah, that's why they're in the tier above. And that should lead to this evaluation of just what type of mountain we're building here with the power rankings and where you're starting, what that altitude is like for teams 20 to 15, whatever, where number 10, number 10, 11 comes in, T1 in this instance, when you're looking at it. And then of course you get towards this tippity top. You, you got an oxygen mask on here with the altitude, how high up we are at this point when you're talking about a squad like KT Rolster and what they did to D plus Kia, even with all those early game advantages, even with death getting like a 2,000, 3,000 cash in early game, didn't matter because the skills, the team fighting was there for this KT Rolster squad. 
the KT roller coaster keeps on rolling and it is heading full steam into the LCK playoffs. Heading full steam into a Gen G matchup on Saturday. I so badly wanted to put KT ahead of Gen G, but I mean, they're still perfect on the split. They've really not been tested. KT has looked so clean though, but because of the struggle against DRX, not enough to bump them unless they win that head to head against Gen G over the weekend. Obviously, that's their ticket to top three. And I'm looking at Gen G looking to put out a little bit of a response to something. And I'm sure they're probably not even aware of this type of situation. But a response out on the riff to what 100 Thieves Quid was saying. Making some comparisons of some players and saying it could be the same. I think Pays is about to put a little bit of some salt on that statement and say, Are you sure you want to say that one again? Because we are looking at Pays dominant. Throughout the course of this whole year, the debut year of him on this Gen G roster, it ain't stopping now. It ain't stopping in playoffs. Buckle up, folks. This is the Pays experience. We love double lift. That's not the comparison for Pays. We know the comparison. It's ruler. It's a way higher standard than even double lift looking good in the LCS. Pays, you know, he's he's top of the table, top of the world aspirations when it comes to ADCs. Top of the world is still dominated by JDG and BLG, but the seesaw continues. Struggle against R, not struggle. You know, don't close out cleanly against RNG for BLG. A 2-0 against World Elite, but they had to come back from some pretty big de deficits in both of those matches, which means even a slight slip up, not even a loss, means JDG says, give me that top spot back. This is an 11 compared to an 11.1, man. They are always, ahead of the schedule always ahead of being perfect we love jdg and blg and what they've done and you said it right there's just enough of a window to squeak on by jdg as the deadline comes through for these lpl playoffs still overwhelmingly confident and positive about these two teams and the, and the level of excellency that we have seen from them where they're going to be in these lpl playoff brackets that security that they got the security blanket that we talked about for so many teams being incredibly valuable frankly i don't even think jdg or blg need to care about being and having that safety blanket that's just how good and how dominant they have been throughout the course of this year they only want that safety blanket against each other so blg can say okay we can lose once more against jdg but you know then we finally got to figure things out but how about this top four on this list a combined four series losses between four teams you know even more so paint the picture of how incredible it is at the very top for jdg and blg you, you know, you're unbelievably over the moon talking about both Gen G and KT Rolster and looking at this matchup that we're heading down towards of them on this weekend and what that type of showdown could mean and who gets ahead of who. And, you know, even these records splitting out at something like 17 and one for both of these teams and how incredible and record breaking that would be. You still would have JDG and PLG ahead of them by whatever enough of a margin that it is almost an instant thought about how good, how amazing these twads are. I don't know any time in recent history that we have been treated to this kind of collection of a top four than we than we are this year. Yeah, usually one of these squads would be talking about a record like this completely dominating their region, but you have two of them in the two biggest regions Absolutely incredible stuff so far in the summer split. Can't wait for those playoffs, but that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you on that flippity flip.